Hi, I'm Mike from thesubstream.com, and you're watching Watch This Instead for the week of January 23rd, 2009. We're going to put one of these out every Friday, and we're going to tell you what not to watch this weekend and what you should be watching instead. And that's no different this week, as I'd like to talk about the third installment in the Underworld series of uh, vampire versus werewolf movies, Underworld, Rise of the Lycans. The third film is a prequel and it's set in the Middle Ages and it serves to set up the bitter blood feud between the vampire clan and their one-time daylight protectors, the Lycans, who are werewolves. Um, the third film is directed by a guy named Patrick Totopoulos, uh, who did the creature effects for all three of the movies, and as it turns out, <clears throat> This is a really good thing. All three of the films, this one included, have been marked by this really weird combination of completely over-the-top, grandiose, huge ambition, huge scale storytelling full of completely overwrought dialogue, crazy over-the-top sets, romantic storylines, and really dumb mistakes that kind of wrecked the whole thing, like individual performances that are so bad that they're distracting and distractingly tight leather pants, and like in this third film, how the vampire council, who are 12 really kind of spooky looking vampire dudes and dudettes, they're followed around this whole time inside their very spooky gothic castle inside a cave by this like retinue of like 20 year old slutty women dressed in with spiky short hair and mascara and uh, they're wearing really skin tight revealing boob showing off uh, cocktail dresses in the middle ages with these films you're always kind of going back and forth between oh what like what a great idea that's so cool and what what elevated the first film, and the third as well, at least a little bit, is the filmmaker's insistence on using real physical effects rather than CGI. While there's a lot of CGI in this film, there's an enough dudes in rubber suits and real prosthetic snarling snouts to at least remind me of how they used to make monster movies in the good old days, before computers and when they usually didn't have enough money to make anything out of latex that looked real or scary, so they had to use filmmaking tricks, real actual techniques like lighting and shadows and sound design and performances to scare the shit out of their audience. And that's kind of related to my problem with these films. The Underworld films aren't vampire movies, and they're not werewolf movies either. There's not even any... There's lots of vampires and werewolves in them, but there's no humans in them, at least none that we actually care about. Just how the, like how the Blade movies with Wesley Snipes are, you know, kung fu movies that just happen to be set in vampire land, the underworld films are Shakespearean tragedies with bad dialogue that just happen to be set in vampire land and have uh, kung fu as well in the Middle Ages. So here's my problem. It's not scratching my itch. I want to see a vampire movie. I want to see a werewolf movie. Call me old-fashioned or a traditionalist, but I like the scared, crying, huddling human locked in a closet while the beast stalks at midnight and its shadow falls, comes in through the window. I don't, you know, I don't need any of the like epic battle between 500 vampires and 500 werewolves. I just like a monster chasing a family or like one person. So, and that's not. Underworld, and that sucks. So here's what you should watch instead. Go to the video store or zip.ca or wherever you get your movies and get a movie called, and I can't believe I'm going to, for the second week in a row, recommend an independent Canadian horror movie, but there you go. Things are what they are. Get a movie called Ginger Snaps. It came out in 2000. It's Canadian and it's a werewolf movie and it's about werewolves in a way that the Underworld movies aren't because it's about the myth and the metaphor of turning into a werewolf and I know that sounds weird but trust me it's about the real world anxiety 
and angst that happens when your body changes in ways that you don't expect it to and your mind starts thinking thoughts that you never thought it would think as you get older and things happen to you. And it's about all of that in a really clever, simple, really kind of affecting way. And because it's about real life anxiety and subconscious angst, it's scary in a way and moving in a way that the underworld films uh, can never be. And also, kind of probably due to the fact that it was made for no money, it's a perfect example of how monster movies should be made. You don't see the monster. You see a shadow, you see its fur, you see its claw. You hear it snarl, you see a swing set moving and creaking in the distance. And it scares the shit out of you because it's not just a big beast walking around like, oh, I'm a werewolf, I got big teeth, it's, it's implied and it's scary uh, and it works. And you never see the monster until it's too late. And that's probably because the monster looks really stupid because they didn't have any money. But that doesn't matter. It doesn't make the movie any less worth watching, especially if you're in the mood for a really good werewolf movie. So thanks for watching this, and thanks for watching Ginger Snaps if you're buying what I'm selling. Come back next week, and come comment on the site about what your favorite werewolf movie is. Don't say Teen Wolf. Ryo, what's your favorite? Uh, I like Wolf, starring Jack Nicholson.